We begin our news tonight with the largest investigation of its kind in the state. The subject of the investigation, PFAS, or forever chemicals. They're called that because these chemicals don't naturally break down over time, and there's no known way to destroy them. Now, some of those chemicals are found in many household products and dumped down the drain or from industrial plants. Chemicals end up in the sludge left behind at wastewater treatment plants. For decades, that sludge was hauled to farms across Maine to be used as fertilizer, and the PFAS chemicals it contained leached into the groundwater. Tests now show that private wells near those farms have alarming levels, levels that studies have linked to cancer, low birth weight, and other serious health problems. Even more alarming, the number of poisoned wells is growing. New Center Maine's Vivian Lee joins us now from Fairfield with the latest. Viv? Well, Pat, impacted residents say they're trapped in a toxic nightmare as regulators from the Department of Environmental Protection are scrambling to find out if this PFAS contamination is isolated to this area or a much larger statewide problem. And they've hurt us and our children and our animals. What they did is they gave us all basically a, a death sentence. Penny Harkins of Fairfield is talking about the same thing federal health officials are saying, that there is growing evidence linking PFAS or forever chemicals to numerous health problems from organ cancer to kidney dysfunction. It Neighbor Sue Otis's husband has undergone five surgeries for bladder cancer. It's, just, it's awful to see a loved one decline when they shouldn't have to. Nathan Saunders believes his wife's kidney failure is connected to being exposed to high levels of PFAS for decades. The industrial chemicals should not be in our water. These residents are reeling from the discovery late last year of high levels of the industrial chemicals in their private wells. Samples were taken months after the compounds were first discovered in milk from the 500-acre Tozier Dairy Farm a year ago. The farm's milk was pulled from the shelves and beef production halted. They all live in the neighborhood and they love to come to Graham. I have Grammy days. Bruce and Kathy Harrington have three children and 14 grandchildren. The kids eat vegetables right out of the garden. They love my sugar snap peas. They play in the dirt. I'll play with that. Gulp big glasses of cold water on hot days and practically live in the couple's swimming pool. But now these precious memories turn her stomach. The grandkids swim every summer uh, in that pool and we fill it from the well, not knowing that it was contaminated water they've been swimming in every year. Next door, Ashley Goldrup and her fiance, Troy Rennie, had big plans for their first home, located on six acres. We are supposed to be getting married on this property, you know, next year. A dream shattered by a toxic nightmare silently seeping into the couple's well for years. You don't want to be sitting on top of something that can, you know, give you cancer or cause you to have birth defects. I've been feeding myself poison and my family poison, you know, so... Yeah, I'm angry. Kathy and her husband bought their home more than 30 years ago, and they feel blindsided by tests that found shocking levels. The EPA safe limit for PFAS is 70 parts per trillion. Levels in wells along Howell Road alone show numbers as high as 20 to 30,000 parts per trillion. More than 60 wells in the rural community of about 6,500 people are in the danger zone above the federal safety standard. The industrial compounds are in household goods like cleaning products, carpets, and furniture. Forever chemicals because they're highly resistant to anything breaking down their potency in the human body or in the environment. The Department of Environmental Protection says wastewater sludge spread as fertilizer on the farm's fields is the source of the contamination. A number of impacted residents live next to or near the farm. Stormwater runoff from the fields often ends up in their yards. Rainer Lohman, a Ph.D. environmental scientist, is the director of the Superfund Research Center at the University of Rhode Island. He says over time with rainfall, the compounds will first contaminate the top several feet of the soil. And they will then slowly trickle into the soil and move further down and eventually reach the groundwater, which will then be pumped up by somebody else for drinking purposes. The state approved practice of using sludge as fertilizer on the 10th generation dairy farm began in the late 70s, lasting until 2015. Otis remembers the smell when it was first dumped on fields near her backyard. With the toilet paper flying, it would sit there and rot. 
and then they would spread it. Recently, dozens of Fairfield residents who have high levels of these chemicals in their drinking water voiced their anger and concerns about the exposure. We're just blown away by this. Nathan Saunders filed a class action lawsuit alleging that Sappy North America's Somerset Mill in Skowhegan was a source of the contamination. Sappy strongly denies the allegation. The Department of Environmental Protection says the sludge came from the Kennebec Sanitary Treatment District. It collected industrial waste from the Hudamaki Paper Packaging Mill in Waterville. Soil Prep Incorporated, a fertilizer processing plant located in Plymouth, also spread biosolids on some of the fields. DEP officials say both companies were in compliance with state permits when the sludge was applied. The treatment plants, they didn't know this was here. Uh, people in the state of Maine didn't know this was in the products they were using. Besides Fairfield, investigators recently collected samples from nearly 50 private wells in nearby Benton and Unity Township. 19 have levels above the EPA safe advisory limit. Back in the 80s and 90s, several hundred sites throughout Maine were licensed to receive sludge, but only a handful remain. We know that we're going to find more sites. We don't know what their levels are going to be. The DEP is installing systems with activated carbon filters, considered the most effective in removing PFAS in affected homes. Tests show the costly systems are removing the compounds below the safe limit in nearly two dozen wells so far. More are being installed every week. Now, recently, Fairfield town officials took the first step towards expanding public water along the Route 201 corridor, which would include residents impacted by PFAS contamination. And the town is looking for ways to pay for it, including loans and grant money. Take various different sections one at a time. We can hopefully try to ensure that public drinking, you know, access to clean drinking water is made available to everyone that needs it. But back on Howe Road, there is clean water thanks to the filtration systems. But residents say that still doesn't go far enough. They want their soil tested and they worry if their homes are contaminated as well. It's scary to think about, you know, this is what we thought was going to be forever. And is it? I don't I don't really know. Kathy and her husband, meanwhile, have elevated levels of PFAS in their blood. They hope to get all of their family members tested. But doctors say they have no answers as to the long-term impact on their health. So basically we're left with the stress of knowing that this poison's running through our whole bodies. Now testing along the Fairfield town line is leading DEP investigators to test private wells and homes in Oakland, a community just southwest of here. But those results have not yet been released. Now, if you would like more information about bottled water that's being distributed to impacted residents, resources and contact information for those state agencies conducting this PFAS investigation, go to our, our website and mobile app. Reporting live from Fairfield, I'm New Center Rains, Vivian Lee. Back to you.